What's up YouTube? I'm Alex from Happy Trails and today we're going to be talking about carnivorous plants. So right here is my pond and my waterfall. This is the centerpiece to my collection. So let's start over here. So over here I have the Venus flytrap. One of the most widely known and common carnivorous plants imaginable. Native to the coastal regions of the Carolinas uh, near the Myrtle Beach, Wilmington area. These plants are actually pretty fairly easy to grow. They're pretty fairly easy to find in stores. Um, the requirements are no miracle grow, no regular potting soil, and do not water them with tap water. It can kill them. I mean, it can kill them easily than you might think because these plants rely on low nutrient soils and insects for nutrition so that's my venus fly traps right here we have my cephalotus follicularis which is native to the southwestern regions of australia perth north cliff areas like that uh, these plants can be a little on the tricky side to grow some of them can tolerate more heat than others etc but these plants mostly like high temps in the 80s and cool temps in the 50s at night Fahrenheit so if we continue on over here this is my Saracenia flava copper top which it looked a lot better this spring but with it being so late in the season some of its older traps from earlier in the year are already starting to die off but this plant can grow to be about three feet tall, has a really, really wide mouth, and can just fill up with insects over the summer. This is my Carolina Yellow Jacket. It's a hybrid species that I ordered from Car uh, Cook's Carnivorous Plants out of Oregon. If you guys are ever interested in ordering any of these plants, I highly suggest ordering from him because he sells high quality plants and have never been disappointed with any I've ordered from him. So remember, Cook's Carnivorous Plants. Come over here just a little further. This is my Saracenia Rigliana or Scarlet Bell. I actually purchased this plant from a local nursery last year and as you can see, this thing has exploded and has done exceptionally well the last two years. We move along over here. This is my Saracenia Minor Okifinokinsis or Okifinoki Giant. And in the wild, as you can see, mine's not real big now. It's still practically a baby, but in the wild, these plants have the potential to grow pitchers anywhere from three to four feet tall so they can they actually get quite large and you can see all my drosera or sundews growing down in the middle of the pot there this is my saracenia judith hendel this is one of my favorites it grows these large robust pitchers towards late summer early fall with these just awesome lids on them As you can see the pattern here on the back and just awesome coloration. This is also one I bought from a local nursery or in the area. Okay, debated, debated whether or not to show this barrel. Insects have actually got on it pretty bad over the summer. This is my Saracenia Judith Hindel, another one. Not quite as healthy as the other one, but maybe next year it'll look a little better. My Saracenia flava, as you can see, most of the spring traps are dying out and it's growing the leaves that don't become traps, the phyllodia leaves at the end of summer. So it won't look real good again until next year. This is my, now this one here, this is my Saracenia rubra gulfensis. This is native to areas along coastal Florida, coastal Alabama, Mississippi, basically regions along the Gulf Coast. 
they grow big they get a real wide top and usually grow a nice red but yet again insects decided to get on this plant and pretty much well I don't have to say much more my Saracenia lot of night that I bought at the beginning of this year still looks healthy but could have done better if the insects had left it alone now right here is one of my favorite barrels I've got two Saracenia purpureas growing in this barrel that look absolutely awesome my Saracenia citicina or parrot pitcher plant it's another one native to coastal regions and swampy regions in South Georgia, North Florida, Ala Western Alabama. And here's some Utricularia or bladderwort, a few Drosera growing in here. Right here you can see Drosera intermedia and Philoformis, otherwise known as a sundew. These plants produce sticky little drops on their leaves that catch insects. They get stuck in the plants basically like glue and the little droplets digest the insect alive. So that's this barrel. This is my pond, my big waterfall. You might can see my fish down there. I'm not sure exactly where he is. There he goes. Hello fishy. We have another Venus flytrap up here too. Another sickly looking pitcher plant. Hopefully I can rehabilitate it. Not really feeling very optimistic at this point because it's very brown. Just looks very sickly, but we'll just have to wait and see. Maybe it'll come back next spring. Okay, and if we continue this way down the path, my container herb garden, which I have a few, just some oregano and basil and things of that nature. Here's where I have my most exotic, most unique plants that I have out of the entire collection. And this is where I keep my nepenthes. So we're going to go in here and we're going to check this out. And welcome to the jungle. So in here, I have to keep it tropical. I mean, humid, tropical. It's just plain hot in here. So as you can see on the thermometer here, it's close to 90 Fahrenheit. And we'll start here. This is my Nepenthes ventricosa that I actually bought from Lowe's and when I first bought this plant it was tiny I mean in a teeny tiny little pot and in the plastic cube of death so I bought it took it out of here repot it and rescued it and it hadn't stopped ever since this one here is one I have always looked forward to having and always wanted to have and I finally do this is my Nepenthes Baikal Karata and these plants are native to regions like Borneo, Southeast Asia, Indonesia, different places like that. And what makes these plants very unique is underneath the pitchers, they're still tiny, it's still a baby. They have these two little fangs. I don't know if you can see that or not up under the pitcher, but it has these two protrusions under the top that look like fangs. Yeah, you can probably see right there what makes this plant unique that's just the smallest picture but hopefully soon we'll have some bigger traps be able to show you better right here is my Nepenthes spectabilis cross vecchii that I bought back in July from Cook's carnivorous plants and it's done quite well since I bought this plant love the colored peristomes around the pictures and as you can see, it's got quite a bit of new growth coming out. 
this is a basal cutting I took off of a Nepenthes ventrata or a lot I'm not exactly sure which it is because it looks exactly alike and it was never specified on the tag when I bought the plant but down here is the mother plant and this thing as you can see has gotten huge and it just has pictures everywhere I mean these make medium-sized pictures they don't get too terribly large if you can tell but if you can see down inside pictures here there's water and it catches insects down in there and that's how these plants feed themselves all right over here i have my phalaenopsis orchid which is not in bloom right now but will be soon it has a new bloom coming out right here back here a small terrarium that i made and over here i have my Nepenthes hookeriana, or hooker's pitcher plant. It's a hybrid between Nepenthes ampullaria and Nepenthes rafflesiana. So a lot of people say to grow this plant in lowland conditions, but I've been growing it in intermediate conditions and it's just done fine. I mean, this plant has done awesome. It gets these large pitchers pretty close to the size of an avocado, which are quite colorful quite colorful of nice striped peristome and here's a new one opening right here brand new one starting to open oh easily one of my favorite ones here we have my Nepenthes Miranda this is my largest pitcher plant as far as size and trap size it grows pretty large pitchers but these are actually the intermediate pitchers. These aren't the largest ones that it grows. The leaves can get quite large too. Uh, let me turn it here. I mean, you can see the leaf spans pretty wide across here. But extremely easy to grow. Uh, very common to pint these. Sometimes you can get lucky and find these at places like Lowe's for sale and hanging baskets, local nurseries. You just really have to look around. All mine I had to purchase online. Just some regular house plants and ferns. Down here, another one of my barrels of Saracenia with my Saracenia leucophila or white top pitcher plant that was pretty much decimated by crickets and grasshoppers. So I'm keeping it in here temporarily, just at least till the bugs settle down some before I can put it back outside. But as you can see, even if it's not getting full sun, it's still doing quite well. So I was pretty happy about that. Down here is my Nepenthes ampullaria. This is a lowland, uh, warm growing species native to swampy regions of Borneo, Malaysia, Indonesia, areas like that in the South Pacific very tropical plant so yeah that's what I got going on in here and there will be more to come hopefully sooner I will get, be getting a new greenhouse and yeah so far it looks real nice So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you do, hit that like button and subscribe, and hopefully we'll be able to post more later. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.